So when you Google bugs, um, this is uh, Google bugs and they look at the images, and this is the sort of thing you get. Most of them are pretty good, but we get a whole variety of what we could refer to as creepy crawlies, invertebrates, arthropods, and it, you know, it doesn't really matter. Um, this is a slightly more technical idea of what you're going to get. I'm yet to dress this one up. By the way, this is the second time I've done this talk, so bear with me. Normally, I think last time it was a well-honed beast. Um, I've done about, you know, I've done probably about 60 or 70 of them at that point, so I knew it off by heart, but I was also a little bit bored of it, to be honest with you. <laughs> it's brand new, so you get a very exciting me, but you also get a slightly shambolic presentation, so bear with me. Um, this will have lots of pretty pictures all over it to illustrate what all those words mean. But basically, the bigger definition of bugs is pretty much everything without a backbone. And that's why I can shoehorn in things like crustaceans, spiders, snails, um, what other things we've got here today. So um, that's why I'm doing it, because it makes life just a little bit more interesting. And there's an awful lot of them as well. Um, there's something like uh, a million different species of invertebrates have actually been described, but some scientists reckon there's some like 10 million of them out there. So these things are really important. And if you don't love them by the end of tonight, one, what's wrong with you? Uh, two, <laughs> you will at least appreciate what they can do for you, because we cannot and simply cannot exist without the help of these little feathers. In fact, they support all of life on Earth pretty much on their little shoulders. <coughs> so, we'll move off that rather boring side. Um, now, most of the images of bugs are pretty negative. You know, if you, if you have a little look around, it's all about people killing them. You Google the, uh, the bugs and that, you get a load of uh, pest uh, extermination sites pop up. Um, for me, though, there's something in this, actually, but the negativity is a bit overwhelming. But the old movie, if you've never seen this, it's brilliant. Who's seen this bit? Well, the young people probably haven't, because, you know, it's pretty <laughs> um, But it's a, it's a bit of a classic. It's well worth seeing, especially in mind of today's special effects, because it is rather funny. Um, um, and this was one. Um, now, <laughs> this is, that was, I haven't seen this one. Has anyone seen this one? This one's got to be good. Um, I love really rubbish B movies. I think they're great. That's B movie as in the letter B, not as in the insect. So, um, but uh, it, it brings us on to an important point, which is one of the most hated creatures. It's not an insect, but it's a bug under my loose definition. Is of course the spiders, big bottom ones or not. Um, and here's a graph. It's the only graph you're going to see tonight, to make the most of it. Um, it's a nice graph with a little spider on it. Um, so people hate spiders. Why do we hate spiders so much? Well, actually, who here, here hates spiders? Who's got a spider phobia? Now, be honest, it's okay. It's okay. You're, you're among friends. I'm not going to suddenly run at you with a spider. <laughs> I've learned in the playground that's a good way of staying at the, off the bottom of the food chain uh, and at the school playground, but it ultimately it didn't do many favours for spiders. So a few of you are what you call phobic. I disagree with that, because if you were truly phobic, you would be on the floor now, um, you would probably be, we'd probably have to phone for an ambulance, um, and you would have proper clinical symptoms. So if you look at a graph of the number of people in the world and the amount they love bugs, these are the people that really, 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 really hate them like are phobic to the point where they'd be hospitalized by looking at a spider. And these ones would, would be very, very lovely. There's only 3% at each end. So 3% of you, fortunately, not one of that 3% are here, I would say that some confidence. And, and I'm up this end. Most of us sit in this part of the curve. And if you know your science and you know your graphs, you'll see that's what you call a bell-shaped curve. And that basically means we're all in the middle, generally, and that usually means we don't care one way or the other, really, about spiders, and we base most of what we say about them on what other people say, so we keep in with our peers, we keep in with the crowd, because it's not cool to like spiders, right? So if you say, oh, I hate spiders, everyone goes, yeah, me too, and that's it, and that's how this perpetuates. It's actually quite, quite weird. Um, but the reality is that most of us really don't know anything about them, because very few of us have actually bothered to get eyeball to eyeball I say eyeball to eyeballs with spiders. Not really got to know what they are and what makes them tick and why they're important. Um, now, by some weird little accident, um, where's it gone? Um, I am that three percent. I love um, uh, spiders. Uh, my mum was borderline phobic, and I know this because she provided me with one of the. That's me, actually, by the way. That's me as a student. I notice I've got a little bit of a beard going on. There. <laughs> I forgot about that. I do apologise, actually, for looking a bit like a tramp. That's what my wife called me this morning when I got up. She said, you look like a tramp. It's because I've got a bit of a 
I've got a bit of a race going on with Mr. Steve Batchel, you see. He's just come back from Antarctica and he's got a bit of a beard. So we're having a beard race. Okay? Um, a face race, I think we're calling it. So we're having a face race. Um, yeah, anyway, so that's, anyway, I used to have them as well. It's, not so, it's, it's slightly less grey in those days. But you can see the important thing is this other hairy thing I'm holding. And that was my passion. That was my, one of my pet spiders that started me off. But my mum, by some genetic twist of fate, some cruel genetic twist of fate, was borderline phobic. So, I know this because one day, in front of the milkman, well, my mum used to keep the milkman, milk money in a little pot up on the shelf, right? So I remember the milkman coming to the door and, and asking for his money. Uh, that's all he was asking for. And um, she got the money pot down, and this spider ran out. It's a house spider, just an ordinary house spider, um, like, in the, well, like, uh, like in this shot here. Um, it's an ordinary house spider, just like that one there. And um, it ran out from uh, behind the milk uh, money and ran right up the sleeve of her blouse. Now, what did my mum do? Embarrassed me, that's what she did. She screamed like a banshee and then took her blouse off in front of her. So, this was all going on. And of course, this was traumatic for me because obviously, you know, this is the milk and this is my mum. But, um, but my mum, you know, that's how frightened she was quite a, you know, quite a civilised, quite a quiet spoken woman up to that point. But, but that, and I learned some words as well that I've never, never known before. Um, but that's, that's kind of, that sort of illustrates what pho phobia is. And after that, I really worked with my mum. I really, and I, I did eventually uh, break it down. I did not want to break it down that way, but I did, uh, I did actually show her, you know, I, I, I cured her to a point. Um, although she didn't know the full truth. So my mum's no longer with us, um, but I did just before she, <laughs> before she passed away, I did. Uh, confess. I oh, actually I confessed on television and she phoned me afterwards going, Nicholas, is that true? <laughs> uh, underneath the bed, um, when I was at university, I went to university in Exeter, just up the road here, <laughs> and I would uh, go home for the summer holidays, but at university I was making up for lost time, so I kept a lot of exotic pets, including spiders. Of course, I was doing that uh, probably illegally at university as well, you're not supposed to keep pets in all these lodgings like I said, you did. Um, bad, I'm a bad example. I'm sort of do apologise to the younger people. Um, so anyway, I kept, I, I, I keep these spiders, I bring them home uh, in the summer holidays, and I would keep them under the bed. Um, but I learned, actually, as a teenage boy, um, mothers expect you to start becoming antisocial and smell of it. So the smellier you make the room, the less likely your mum is to go in there, and the more likely you are to get away with breeding spiders through various generations. So I kept these things under there. This is this is a baby tarantula in, in exactly the same operation that I have now. This is a baby tarantula in what you call a full spiral, basically a lunchbox. And you can I think that's the thing that's up there, among um, other things. But uh, yeah, that's that's what that's what there. So anyway, um, of course, the point of that is, oh yes, um, um, another illustration of how people uh, don't like spiders and some horrible misunderstandings that I've had in my career um, was I went to Guyana on the first trips I've ever made to the tropics. Guyana's in South America, North South America. Wonderful, wonderful country. Lush tropical rainforest. I mean, I've never been to a rainforest before. It was amazing. And my first night in the rainforest was this little hut, which was thatched with palm leaves. And you could lie in bed and look up at the spiders. And there was these guys, this guy here, the pink toe tarantula, the classic tarantula, big hairy legs. They're all living in between um, the, the thatching on the roof. And they live in these sort of silk socks. And they were all coming in, they all come out at night, so I lie in bed at night with my torch, just looking at them, just thinking, this is just a dream come true. It could get any better, the crickets were singing, it was beautiful. And the Amerindians that uh, were in the village um, that, that, that I was staying in, um, these, the, the local people, they had this really bad habit of playing really nasty pop music, European pop music, at full volume. And um, I had Phil Collins, just the moment I'm lying here, this is, <laughs> Phil Collins blaring out throughout the rainforest singing another, another day in paradise. And I, was like, I can't agree with you more, Phil. I don't like your music, but I agree with you at this point. Um, anyway, then what happened this morning? I got up, and not only do I have a hummingbird nest, um, uh, I noticed a hummingbird nest in my window, so the hummingbirds were flying in and out, um, feeding the chicks, which was amazing. Um, I also nest of uh, baby pink toe tarantulas uh, as well in the room and that was out and they were hatching. So what I did is I got a big glass because I thought well, I, wanna, I, I must go get my camera, I want to photograph this. So I had to run off to breakfast first. So I put this glass over the baby tarantulas. I went back to my room after breakfast, really eager to get going with the photography. And you can see that the local the lady who did the they did the room she was doing the cleaning. Just there was a horrible image. She's basically outside the hut going <laughs> She thought I 
was like lots of the other guests, and I put the glass over these spiders because I didn't want them in my room. So, and this is what happens, and I have, I've got numerous stories of restaurants where I've gone, oh, that cricket! Just flown into the window, and then the waiter goes, sorry about that, sir. It's like, no, 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 no. This happens all the time when you're an entomologist, so the best thing you have to do is, under, other than when you're in, audience, in front of an audience like this, is to be quiet about your, your, your passion. It's very difficult to hold it in sometimes, but you have to be quiet, because I've learned that not many people see the world through my eyes. Hopefully you will by the end of today. Incidentally, the hummingbirds met a sticky end as well. They got eaten by a snake the next day. But, um, <laughs> they asked to change rooms. It was a um, They all stay there anyway. Anyway, what is it you don't like about spiders? What, 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 what do you think people don't like about spiders? What, what, those that didn't like spiders, what is it you don't like about them? The way they move. The way they move. Too many legs. <laughs> Maybe they think you've got too little. <laughs> so the way they move. Um, what, what do you think is dangerous about spiders? Well, what can they actually do to us? They can bite you. Right. So basically, <laughs> those that you worry about, right? They look pretty nasty, don't they? That is actually that spider there upside down. I took a picture of it, which it was about to mold. For some weird reason, if you've never kept tarantulas before, don't worry. <laughs> when they're about to mold, they do look dead because they go, they flip over on their back and just do that, and you say, I've killed it. So I think the first ones I've ever, ever had, I've forever put them back again and then flip back over. <laughs> I'm dead? No, you're not. I'm dead? No, you're not. Uh, anyway, that's what you see when they're upside down. And that is the thing. And they're beautiful. I mean, I know, you know, I'm not expecting you to, they're quite small, they're only about 10 millimeters long. Um, um, and that's the fang there. They curl up on the body. There's the mouth. All these lovely bristles and that. They all use like a filter. You know when you eat your soup, which is a bit dumpy, minestrone soup, if you suck it through your teeth, yeah? You leave it. I'm giving you teaching those are bad manners now. So you think it's you leave the, the noodles on the outside. Well, that's pretty much how they do it. They mash up their crickets and their cockroaches, whatever they're eating, and then they go, and they just suck up all the juices, and then what's left is the little pellet, all the hard bits, all the noodles. Um, so anyway, that's what people are scared of. And yes, it's true. All spiders, even the little fellow behind the TV set at home, has fangs, okay? So get over that. They all have fangs, and they are all venomous. Not poisonous, venomous. Venomous venom is the injection of poison. So they're all venomous. <coughs> However, we have very little to worry about any of them. Uh, most of them, and certainly the big tranches in South America, um, are all, uh, sorry, most of the big tranches will not bite you. There's some in the, in the New World, um, so the Old World, Africa and Asia, that will, um, if, they, if you upset them, they will bite you. Um, but the South American ones, like the ones like the pink toes, and, the, and that one there, and a few others, they won't bite you. You can poke them and prod them, they will not bite you. But what you do have to worry about, and something I've become super sensitive to, are the little hairs on the back of the abdomen. And that's just, this is an actual picture of her hairs. Again, I've got them under a microscope. See that thing? That's, that looks like a, a, a zoo. It's not a very good picture because it's the best one microscope to do, but that looks like a zoo sphere. Lots of little backward pointing barbs. And that, they break off. They're very, very narrow at the base. So you can see that really narrow base. What happens is the spider, when it's upset, vibrates its legs to get against its abdomen, which is like a big water filled balloon. All these little hairs morphed up. And they're almost invisible, you can hardly see them unless they're back there. And then they get into your nose, into your eyes, and into the little cracks in your fingers. Um, and they really itch or, or worse. And if you're very sensitive, you can do all sorts of horrible things to your eyes. So that's what you've got to watch out for. So the thing you need to worry about South American spiders isn't the fangs, it's their cuddliness. It's all those lovely heads. I know you want to give them a big hug with that. So these spiders are amazing um, for lots and lots of reasons. And I can talk all day about spiders. But what was on the subject? Yeah, this is another one. Um, we're all familiar with don't touch hairy caterpillars, yeah, because they get you into trouble. That's one of those, and that happens in this country as well. Lots of caterpillars have what we call urticating hairs. Hairs which, again, under the microscope, look a little bit like Zulu spears. They're covered in secondary compounds which really itch and hurt. Um, and I know this for a fact because um, I spent a little bit of time. This is a, this is a puss moth caterpillar, what they call a puss moth. It's a different species of the puss moth we have in this country. And that's from America. Um, it's an amazing looking thing, but one of the things that I did with a similarly related species to this, um, and I, you, you hear it talked about, has anyone here had a nasty caterpillar experience? Has anyone had an itchy hand? You've had, you've had a nasty caterpillar experience. It is really, really horrible. I, at this point, I've had a few itchy fingers and stuff over the years because I breed caterpillars or breed butterflies and moths and you know, one, of the, one of the things that happens. Um, but in Australia one night, so we'd just been out in the rainforest filming, um, I think we were filming green tree partners, and we all, we'd all went back to the campfire, and then we all said goodnight to each other, and we all crawled into our sleeping bags on the fire. And I'm lying there, thinking this is lovely, it's a bit like South America, no Phil Collins, like even better. <laughs> um, and I'm lying there, and I feel this sort of horrible itching on my leg. It feels like my leg's on fire. So you might just scratch it, as you do. And oh, as, the, as the hour goes on, I suddenly feel, I feel like I'm on fire. This, this, I'm, what I'm scratching, the worse it's getting. I feel like my whole body, and literally 
did feel like I was being barbecued. So I thought, this is it. So I jumped out of my sleeping bag and went, yeah, what's that? And there was this little tiny caterpillar on my, well, just on the, on the ground, just fell out of my clothing. Um, and it, well, it didn't look like that, basically. It should have looked like that, but it just balled with a couple of little tufts. <laughs> and it had basically displaced all its hairs, and they were all embedded in my body. And the local tractor guides, because I mean, it was driving me insane. You can't see them, so you just on fire. He goes, oh, and you can see it. Like, I'm looking at you. Oh man, I'm really filthy. There's only one way out of this. It's, it's, it's either a gun, <laughs> or you have to endure one of the most painful things known to man. Now, adult males in this room, to be honest now, have you ever been whacked? <laughs> the heavier you are, the worse it is, by the way. Uh, I know you ladies do, but you say that you, you, you don't suffer pain like us blokes do. Um, so, what they did, they, yeah, they got gaffer tape. And they basically they, they applied gaffer tape all over my body and then to a great pleasure in ripping it off the way the And that's the only way to get rid of the hairs of these caterpillars. But it's a quite very effective, very effective uh, bit of biology as well, with a slightly darker or funny side, depending on where Anyway, um, going back to the spiders again, a small digression. Um, we've got plenty of spiders. If you don't like spiders, I suggest you check out these guys. You might have learned about this one last year, I might have told you about this one last year. This is the rare seven leg spider. Um, it's not actually, it's just a lot of the leg. Um, <laughs> this, is a, this is a spitting spider. You may have these in your own house. They're very small. Um, and they catch their prey by, by squirting gooey venom. I can see a little chap nodding over there, so I'm hoping he knows what they are. Um, they squirt a, like a gooey venom. Um, that's like Spider Man uses his wet spinners to stick the, the burglar to the wall. These guys do it with. with Venom, they squirt at the end of the fangs. And it's like silly string, it's an amazing thing to see. It's impossible to photograph, I haven't yet got a photo of it. They do this kind of thing, and the, the poor little fly gets basically pinned down. Absolutely beautiful spider, so do check that out. Um, we've got some very, um, some other nice uh, spiders. This is something you'll see, where are you? This is something you'll see now, in the gold. <laughs> this is that little brown spider you get running around in, in the herbaceous board. You know those little tiny little wolf spiders, little, um, little lycoses? Absolutely beautiful. Look, look at that. How do you not like that? <laughs> if you like the furry things with wet watery eyes, look. It's got eight of them. <laughs> what is there not to like about it? I think they're wonderful, but that's what it's quite a look. Now, this isn't contemplating how to get it, right? This is actually quite vacant. It's sort of just looking at light and dark. Some of them can see the jumping spiders, the little cute ones. They can see you maybe a metre away. So if you're, they often focus on your eyelids uh, acting. They like certain frequencies. And they'll see frequencies of movement, usually an insect movement, but your eyelids do it as well. And they go, ooh, and they look at you and they stare at you. And you just have a love affair and they just idle with you and you go back in there and it's lovely. Um, but then, you know, these guys are fantastic. So, does this not, not, do it, not do it for you? Um, that's what they look like. You see those little things right now running about. Now, keep an eye on them, because in the next couple of months, as spring unfurls, you know, Chris Packham starts going on about the wing tits and stuff. Um, <laughs> Really interesting things are happening elsewhere in the world. Um, this happens, and you'll start seeing some of these spiders carrying around um, using their little spinnerets, which is the little, little limbs that create the silk. Um, and they carry around these lovely big spherical silk exats. Some spiders sometimes sacrifice even more. This one, this piece of particular species will carry off feeds. Some have to hold it in their fangs, so they don't actually eat. They just look after, they put the thing in their mouth and just walk about with this thing, and they can't eat because they then put their eggs out. So it's quite, it's quite a tender moment. Um, and if you keep an eye on them, in the next few, after the eggs, uh, you know, when you start seeing the eggs, just keep looking, because it's something amazing. And it really is amazing. You'll see this. Um, and this is a mum whose eggs have just hatched. And look what's on her bum. Those are all her babies. They ride on her back. Think about it. You'll look down and go, that's weird. That looks a bit different, that spider. It's something wrong. The texture's different. And you look closely, and it'd be covered with loads of babies. This one had nearly 40 little baby spiders hanging on. And they hang on because she's got special hairs on her abdomen, which are like, well, like little, um, like little doorknobs, basically. They've got little swollen ends, it's like little handles, and they all hang on to those and get carried around um, for the first uh, week or so of their lives. Really, 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 really well tender. And if you're still not convinced, how about these guys? You'll see these at the as well. This is the nursery web spider. Um, they are beautiful, they're very distinctive again. They look, they often hold their, their legs in a very distinctive manner. Sometimes these legs will match up with those. So it looks like you've got four legs like a star. Um, absolutely beautiful things. Um, real characters, but the female of that actually, she's well named. She does create 
this little nursery. She bends over silk like that and creates this lovely little home for herself inside. Really, really nice. And in there, she'll rear the young, she'll feed the young, she'll take the food back for them. She'll really look after them. And this is a sort of tenderness that often surprises uh, people about spiders. Um, you can also, when you start getting to know them, not just as spiders, you can start getting to know characters. Now, this is a rather terrible photograph. I, I, I rushed taking it. I took it the other day. Um, this here is a window spider. And you've almost certainly got them at home, and if you're very house proud, they might annoy you because they make those little egg sacs and they stick them around the edge of the window down the side, yeah? But don't um, clean them off. <laughs> um, but you get to know them. I've got a window spider that's been there all winter, and you know it's a window spider, and you could, this is a problem with the spiders, it's, it's not very good, it's not like it's greatest, you go, oh yeah, that's one of those, that's one of those. We don't really celebrate them as well. We don't quite feel right for spiders, so most people don't know what they are, they don't give them common names. But the window spider, it's the only spider, also known as the sector spider, which sounds a bit rubbish really, but the window spider is much better, because of this bit of the weather. It's not an accident, he hasn't forgotten. That there is part of the design, because normally you follow that middle strand of silk right up to the corner here, that's the bit that will annoy you, that's the nest up there where it sits in his little hiding house. Um, and it will, it will run up and down here, and it will detect any little nature, any fly that's trying to get to your house, get stuck in that way, and anything attracted to the light gets stuck in that way, and sure. And deal with it there. And I love this, and you can watch them, you get to know them. You can watch them rebuilding their webs on a regular basis. And know wildlife. You know, normally have to go looking for wildlife. This is wildlife that lives with you, you should enjoy it. What's the spider start? It starts here, it goes round, and you can see it can track its whole journey. Every now and then, oops, drops a stitch. Keep uh, going, <laughs> turns around, goes all the way back, little white one there, it's a bit missing completely. But generally speaking, it's Oh, I've got this perfect design, I'm just to try harder, but you get the idea. You can just kind of watch it and you can see how it's, you can track it around its web. Absolutely beautiful spider. Um, and this is a close up of it as well. This is a, the spider. Oh, it's very, very lovely spider. Isn't that lovely? <laughs> Some kind of reaction. But if you don't like them, appreciate them for their, their maternal care or their beauty, um, then you can at least appreciate their practical uses. Right. This is a very famous house spider. You've all got one of these under, in, under the stairs, or in the cellar, or actually, I've got them all around my house because my wife doesn't clean them up and I don't need it. So, um, none of us do our jobs basically. So, uh, I just study the spider and my, my wife lets me. Um, um, so, yeah, that's Hoppus phalangiopes. That's a brilliant Latin name. If you're going to learn one Latin name tonight, that's the one you can take with. Hoppus phalangiopes. It basically means long limbs. And I love that. So, Hoppus phalangiopes, there it is. It's the daily long legs spider, not the daddy long legs fly, which is the crony fly, or the daddy long legs harvestman, which is not the spider. Oh, so complicated. <laughs> um, this is the common one. And the great, the great way, you know you've got the right spider, because if you give it a little poke or blow on it, it goes, it shakes around in the web so fast, then it just becomes a blur. And that's an anti predatory strategy. So, if you're a bird and you're going around, you get that spider. Imagine a bit of a bird, you've only got a beak, right? You've got no hands, you can't manipulate the situation, you've just got to grab it. And, and it, it sees you come in, or you breathe on it, this thing just goes up that, and you can't, you can't hit it right. So that's how it is. But the great thing about the spiders is they're a specialist on feeding on other spiders. So these are spider-eating spiders. So here we've got, so if you don't like spiders, you've got to like this one at least, right? This is the, the other spiders. So here we go, this is the back I witnessed. Do you know what, I went to the toilet, I've got the chairs, but you can't I went to the toilet. My wife's always going on about me spending far too much time in the toilet. And you know why that 